What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. My name is Chris Drummond. Uh, I am a sports reporter, freelance. Uh, I'm also a casino host and host of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. Uh, We typically interview people that are in the journalism business, such as myself, also entertainment, uh, also sports teams, uh, music, pretty much anybody that wants to come on and share their story, break bread with me and get to know me a little bit as I get to know them and also have them tell their story. Uh, We have a special guest that's coming on today. Her name is Emily Harless. Uh, She is a news producer based out of Orlando, Florida, West. Two is her station, West Bell, W-E-S-H. Um, and she is going to come on and talk to us about her why. She got into journalism, uh, talk about some favorite things of hers, maybe some favorite um, shows she produced. She does the 9 a.m. show. Um, we're going to ask her about some other stuff as well. So without any further ado, I bring to you the wonderful, the talented Emily Harless. Hello there. How are we doing, Emily? Good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. It's wonderful to see you. I just want to say um, thank you for hopping on my platform, my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. Um, How was your day today? It was good. So sorry for the delay in logging on. Um, I don't know if you've ever been on the I-4 in Orlando, Florida, but it is not the place you want to be during rush hours. <laughs> no, I, I feel that. I do. I, I'm coming from Georgia, so I definitely know what you're talking about yeah. with that. No question about it. Um, Once again, want to uh, introduce you pretty much. This is Emily Harless, a news producer out of West 2, uh, based in Orlando, Florida. Um on my Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. Um, I want to give you also some background to why I wanted to talk to you a little bit. Um, so I had a chance to uh, look at your your reel that you actually did at Ball State <laughs> University. Um, first, you went to Indiana University, then transferred to Ball State University. And I, I was um, looking at your reel and I saw some things and I was like, OK, I definitely want to talk to her. Um, <laughs> obviously, somebody who loves journalism, um, like myself, because I'm a reporter as well. Um, I know you're a producer now, but you was in front of the camera then. And one of the things that jumped out to me was the first segment that you, that one of the first segments that I saw was you were talking about Black History Month. Now, obviously, me being African-American, I'm going to take very good interest into that. Anybody who reports about that, because that's such an important month. uh, No question about it. Um, But I also saw some other things you did, too. The one, um, I would say, the one thing that you did was the Plano, Texas that was like, wow, uh, seeing those, seeing those people sleep in those cots like that. Um, and how you reported on that, that was pretty nice. That was pretty good. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you no, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I did watch your reel. Um, I thought you just obviously was very professional. Um, obviously you came, you have a face for camera. That's obvious too. And a passion and love for it. And I really do appreciate you copping on. The only thing that I was a down, the only thing that was a downer was you said you went to Ball State three years and did not see a basketball game. I was like, what? I know. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I like, know. Man. I know. I come from Indiana, which is like one of those big basketball states. And I never, ever <laughs> do a basketball game. Wow. Now you're in Florida, which I was in uh, Orlando. Orlando's in the NBA playoffs playing against Cleveland. So, you know, and you're in one of the most touristy cities. Uh, in Florida. So I'm saying, have you been to a Magic game yet? I've been to two Magic games. I went to one last year, one this year. So <laughs> Okay. Okay. So now that's good. We checked it off the list. Yep. You went to you're good with that. Okay. So as I always do, Emily, I get started by asking why. That's my uh, first question to all my guests that's on here. What is your why? Why did you get involved in journalism? Talk about your upbringing. Uh, you say you're from Indiana which obviously is basketball heaven. If anybody has ever been to Indianapolis, they know it's one of the most beautiful cities out there uh, in, the, in the world, in my opinion. So talk to me about your why into journalism. Who inspired you? What were some of your role models? Yeah, so I actually kind of fell into journalism by accident. Um, it was never something that I like thought about doing. Um, back in high school, actually, I it will really throw out all of my upbringing, my childhood, I was really into like theater and stuff. And I was in a bunch of different types of extracurricular activities. Um, But I got into high school, there was just one semester, my uh, sophomore year of high school, I just needed an extra, like extracurricular to fill. 
And right. my dad was like, you know, like you're good at theater. They have a radio class that was connected to my high school. He was like, why don't you sign up for it? So I signed up for that, tried it and ended up falling absolutely in love with radio. I did um, one of the shows there. And then come my senior year, me and my high school best friend, we were the morning show um, mm -hmm. and won awards from, you know, the um, radio awards in New York City. We won best morning show in the nation. I got best mm -hmm. news director in the nation. So it was a lot of fun. But even still then, I thought of it as more of like a hobby thing. I didn't really see myself going into it because I also really like medicine. My dad, um, he's a firefighter paramedic. So like I've always kind of grown up around medicine. My mom's an engineer. So those STEM fields was something that I was drawn to from my upbringing. Um, so that's actually why I first started at IU is I was like, I'm not going to pursue journalism. I'm going to go to IU for biochem and pre-med. And I went for one semester and pretty quickly into the semester, I was like, Nope. <laughs> I don't know why I ever left. <laughs> so, um, That's funny. yeah, so I decided I was going to switch my major and I'm like, if I'm going to switch my major, I want to go to the school in my state that's best for it, which is what mm -hmm. took me to Ball State University. Um, through there, Ball State has a wonderful program um, called NewsLink Indiana, which is a, basically a student led, um, student ran news channel. It's the only news channel in Delaware County, Indiana. So it's, it's fun that it's student ran and completely independent students I mean yes we have advisors but we're the ones who put it together um and so yeah I went immediately auditioned and got into that thinking yeah I wanted to be on camera because I knew I loved telling people's stories that was my favorite thing about um radio was being able to talk to people and being able to tell those stories or have those segments you know in between songs where we got to tell stories and so that's kind of the reason why I wanted to switch back into it and Producing also was kind of a thing that just came out of the pandemic um, when we switched to everybody kind of doing their own thing. A lot of the reporters and anchors were helping the producers write the shows because we were, you know, we were just reporting it from our living room. And sure. um, so that's that was really my first introduction into producing. And then one of my high school friends who ended up being a sorority sister and was also a news link with me she was going down that track. So I started talking to her more, hanging out with her more. And she showed me the world of producing and that, you know, I loved reporting, but I would get frustrated sometimes when I would go to, you know, do a story and a source would cancel on me last second or sure. whatever. Oh, yeah. so I'm like, hmm. I want to tell your story. Like, what do you not understand? Mm -hmm. um, I like being in control a little bit. So <laughs> she was like, so come to the dark side, come to producing. So mm -hmm. I went behind the scenes. She's like, you still get to tell those stories. You still get to explain, you know, get all of the news out in the world that needs to be out there. But you don't have to deal with as much uh, frustration when dealing with people and changing schedules and stuff. So that's how I got into it. Um, Wesh was a shot in the dark for me. Um, I never expected to jump into, you know, a number 17 market straight out of college. But I was just I saw it open and I had actually talked to a different station down here. Um, so I'd already done research on the area. Um, they ended up needing someone to be hired before I graduated. So I couldn't do that. Um, but since I'd already done research, I saw the job pop up. I was like, screw it. Worst they can say is no. And I ended up getting the job. So now I'm down here, work the morning show and get to, you know, tell those stories. And my, my show is a little bit more talk show-ish. So it's also not even just like the hard news stories. But there's also mm. a lot of politics in there and a lot of entertainment as well. I love it. I do. Mm -hmm. um, um, once again, with Emily Harless on my Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. No, I, I love that because everybody has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Everybody's path into this is uniquely different. You said that you kind of fell into it. You had one path idea and then you kind of pivoted and went to another path, which is great. You spoke about Indiana University. And then you went to Ball State. Now, were there any other considerations of schools that you wanted to go to? Or did you know, I'm going to stay in the state of Minneapolis? Um, I kind of, you know, for money purposes, obviously, wanted to stay within a state school if I could. There were other schools that I had applied to previously that I would have loved to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was more so when I was thinking of the science track. Um, so once I'd already decided I was just going to stay in state, I didn't really, when I decided to switch schools for journalism, I didn't really look outside of the state. And that's also because too, like I knew that Ball State is one of the best schools for journalism that you can go to. It's frequently ranked high on lists and everybody, I mean, 
everybody in my radio program has said it. Like even the people here, like when they interviewed me, cause I was like, I feel like people are just saying that cause we're in Indiana. But when I was getting the interviews done with the Hearst television people, everybody was like, no, like that's a great school. So oh, yeah. it, was, it was a really good decision. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I've been to Indiana a few times. I passed Ball State a couple of times. Uh, I've heard very good things about Ball State. Um, I love downtown Indianapolis. That's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there a few times to see some Pacer games, for sure. I'm, I'm a huge sports person, as you can probably see with the cap on. It's the Astros, so I'm a huge oh, yeah. like sports person for sure. Um, yeah, I was trying to uh, I was trying to avoid the Astros talk because I'm a big Cardinals fan. I don't really like the Astros, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Well, well, listen, I, I had to wear this because it matches kind of what I have on, you know, with the orange yeah, okay, and, okay. and blue. Now, I'm pre I'm predominantly a Padres fan. That's what I am. Okay. So because I grew up in California, grew up in San Diego, California. My dad was in the Navy. So that's where uh planted uh, my roots growing up. So I, I love the Padres, love going to see like Tony Gwynn and Trevor Hoffman and all those guys. And you're a Cardinals fan, obviously. Um, so you know about McGuire, uh, Yadi Molina, you know oh, about yeah. them. That's right. So yeah, Cardinals, obviously, and Albert Pujols, I mean, obviously one oh, yeah. of the Cardinals doors, right? So absolutely, I totally understand that. Now, my family may not like you because they're from Chicago <laughs> and they're huge, <laughs> they're huge Cubs fans. So I understand that, but I always loved the Cardinals. I really did. So oh, um, <laughs> now theater, you mentioned theater before I get to this next question. I'm a huge theater buff, Emily. I really am. Uh, if it wasn't um, sports writing um, and being a sports reporter, I probably would have pursued theater because I, I'm, I'm in love with musicals. I don't know if you're a musical person like that. Okay. So give me your top three musicals and I'll give you my top three. How about uh, that? Oh, no. Because that's the thing is like, I feel like I've been in obviously a few, but I haven't really gone to see many on Broadway. Um, mm -hmm. My first ever actual Broadway show, so it has to be in my top three, you know, was Wicked. Um, mm -hmm. which, uh, no I, mean, I don't think anybody, I don't think anything's going to top that. Maybe Hamilton, but I've yet to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, good, good one, good one. Oh my gosh, it's so I'm so obsessed with it, and my TikTok knows it, and it keeps giving me so many Hamilton recommendations. Right. Um, I really love, and maybe this is another thing that I should have put two and two together that I was meant to be in journalism, but one of my favorites was Newsies. Um, mm. I don't know why I have always just been drawn to that one, and then oh, there's one I can't remember the name of it right now, but if there's one, it's like the origin story of Peter Pan. It's like oh, never I, I, I didn't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the name. name. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember the name either. For the sake of this argument, because those uh, what some of what you mentioned are some of my favorites too. Mm. Lin Manuel did a hell of a job doing oh Hamilton, God. no question about it. Um, I'm gonna name three other ones that I mm. think is pretty good. Um, so one of my favorites is Hairspray. Oh, um, I, I love love Hairspray. Um, another one of my favorites is Les Miserables, and I actually got a, I actually acted in that one in high school, so I like that one. That's one of my favorites. Um, would you call the Greatest Showman <laughs> a, a musical? Because the Greatest oh, why Showman, not? why not? Right, that's one of my favorites too. Um, Rent uh, is another one. Uh, yeah, because you name Wicked. Wicked is probably my number one, my yeah, number one yeah. all the time. So without question. But and then the last one I would probably say as a bonus one. Um, Annie. So that's one of my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I we were in a lot of like obscure ones, obviously, in our high school. We were in, I mean, we had Grease, we had this the fun ones like Grease, Little Mermaid, and stuff. But then we right. had like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, um, oh, Can You Get Your okay. Gun, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, okay, y'all went retro with it. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. I love to throw that question out there. Now, this is a great segue because, Emily, I want to ask you some favorite things. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some favorite questions, and you just give me the 411 off the rip. Are you ready? Okay, I'll try. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Favorite meal you like to cook? Ooh, okay. So because I work the morning shift, I like crock pot meals right now, okay? So one of the mm. things is I call it shredded Mexican chicken. Throw in some chicken in the crock pot, some salsa, some taco seasoning, all that. Let it cook throughout the day. Shred it when you get home. Put it on some rice. Oh, my goodness. It's good. It's good. 
Okay. If I'm if I'm ever in the Orlando area, Emily, please forgive me if I hit you. <laughs> please forgive me if I try to white page you and find you. Please. Just forget. No, you're me. fine. Okay. That is awesome. I love that. Okay. Favorite concert you've ever attended? Ooh. So I have a feeling my answer is going to change this November, but currently I would say probably Logic. Um, mm. Because I, I, like like I feel like he interacts with his audience well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I am going to see Taylor Swift in November. So that might change because I just know that, that one, the Aeros Tour is a showcase. So, Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm from, like I said, San Diego. I spent a lot of time in Atlanta. That's actually where my mother, my uh, aunt and uncle are right now. So I do go back there quite a bit to Georgia. Um, but I'm based in Minnesota. Uh, I can tell you for a fact that um that taylor swift tickets were through the roof here um at the target center so i know is she coming to a is she coming to like a big football stadium or is she going to like the basketball stadium she's yeah she's going to banker's life field house in um indy oh so you're going back to indiana to see yeah. her <laughs> i was oh. trying to go to the miami show but i didn't get the pre-sale code but two of my best friends who live in Indianapolis still got it. And so I was like, screw it. I guess I'll go home for the weekend. Wow. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah. Definitely enjoyed that. Um, Her new song with Post Malone is one of my favorites. It's been on repeat. No question about that. Um, All right. I like that. Um, Favorite place you've ever traveled to? Oh, New York city. That's without a doubt. Really? Um, that's my favorite place. I, I don't know what it is. It's it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know that I could ever live there. I think I would get overwhelmed after time. But mm -hmm. for like the week that I go there, I'm like, I just love how walkable everything is. I love how there's so much things to do all the time. Um, and many, I mean, you can't you can't beat the history of that city. There's so much that you could explore. Uh, I love the I love it for that same reason. I really love the mom and pop stores. Like you know, you know the corner stores. I kind of miss the corner store kind of effect where you kind of go and get a pizza. You know, it could be yep. greasy as ever. You know what the I mean? One dollar slice. <laughs> right, right. You know, I miss that. I miss walking in like parks like that. Um, I miss walking down the street where it is busy bodies. It's almost bumper to bumper. People bumping your shoulders. It's a lot of people, and I just love that. And I love taking the subway too. Minus the rats. The rats are real, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever go to Penn Station, they're real. <laughs> no question about it. They're, they're, are, they're so entertaining to watch. <laughs> they are entertaining. They are entertaining. Yes, but it's not a myth. They are not lying. Rats are really down there, for real. Okay, one more of the favorites. Favorite restaurant you like to eat at? Ooh. Oh, that's hard. Because I'm probably going to say, you know, something that's local to here. Um, we have a restaurant down here that's, well, we have one called the Hangry Bison, which is really, really good. Um, they serve bison burgers. Amazing. Mm. Um, there's another one that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head right now, but it's right down downtown by Lake Eola. And it's same thing. Like they have wonderful brunch food. I'll have to look it up and send it to you afterwards. So you can like insert a text or something. <laughs> Please do because Orlando <laughs> is a place that I, I really love to go to. Um, I, I love it because it's it's so touristy um, and there's so many places, so many things to do there. I believe they have the Ripley Believe It believe it or Not there, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Uh, I didn't go. I didn't get a chance to see it when I was down there, but best believe it is on the bucket list for sure. So I definitely want to see that. Um, if you ever go to Indiana, specifically Pendleton, Indiana, go to mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy's Dairy Bar. Yeah, um, it's that's the one and only restaurant that was made by these people they tried to franchise or they were told to franchise it out the guy said no um oh, but they got mm. wonderful tenderloins um but it's just Ooh. the history there is cool and if there is a little secret from my family on the wall like we're in some of the pictures my grandparents are so that's awesome oh my yeah. god emily, <laughs> emily you're winning my heart here wow tenderloins i'm a huge meat eater person here <gasps> huge do you before i get to this next question do you recall there uh there is a juice bar in downtown Indianapolis, there's like a juice bar, like a famous type of juice bar that's there. That's really good. Really good smoothies. Really good smoothies that they make there. I forgot what it was. I but I went, uh, So I went to um, Indianapolis, um, not this past uh, March, but last March, because they were having an NFL combine. They always have it there in Indianapolis every year in March. So they had a career fair there. And I went to uh, this juice bar. 
And it was it was the best smoothie I ever had in my life. And it was in downtown um near like East Washington, East Washington Street, I believe. If I'm saying the street right. Probably. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, but I don't know what it was, but I just thought I might have thrown that out there because I want to go back yeah. there again. I'm definitely gonna go back there next March for sure. Yeah. And maybe later this year, because I have to see. I gotta see if the Pacers game is gonna be good. Maybe my Lakers are playing the Pacers. That'd be nice too. It'd be nice to see my Lakers play there. So go to cool. go to Indie Burger Joint when you go back. Indie Burger Joint. Where's that at? Um, it's a little bit right outside of the like downtown limits. Um, okay. but it's some okay. of the best burgers you're ever you're ever gonna have. And the tater mm. tots with the tater tot sauce. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. girl. Yeah, you went in my heart <laughs> again. My gosh, tater tots and burgers. Like, man, mm-hmm. they don't make that. They don't make that up here in Minnesota. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, this next question has to do with your job. Uh, now I was reading a little bit, um, and I know you do the 9 a.m. show, you produce that, but I want to know what's the day-to-day basis, uh, not just for myself, but people that will eventually look at this podcast and be like, Hey, I want to be a news producer too. What is the day in the life of a news producer that, um, that's working in market number 17, which is one of the highest markets that you can work in. So talk to me about your day-to-day. Yeah. So with me doing the 9 a.m., um, my work schedule is 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. So definitely a hard one to switch to if you've never done the morning shift before, but you will get used to it. Um, Basically what I do. So I typically try to wake up right around two or a little bit before, you know, do your standard getting ready routine. Once I get to work, um, I always just check in, check emails. But typically by like 3.30, I'm going through our affiliate sources, seeing what stories they're offering to us, um, seeing, you know, what the reporters did last night, um, what's new in the morning and just kind of compiling everything. Every, obviously every producer has a different way that they go about stacking their show. I prefer to like, kind of write it all down, like per block, my ideas in like a, like a word doc almost. So I can see I'm like, Oh, it's like, does this make sense here? Or should I move this around instead of like putting all of the lines in my, system that we you know stack we use ENPS at WESH um so instead of just like putting it all in there and then having to move all the lines around I just write story slugs in word once I feel like everything makes sense then I can be like all right this is what I have I can put you know packages in I can put VOs in I can put Vosots in and make it so much easier for me to stack Mm -hmm. um like I said my show as well we have um it's a little bit more talk show so we have a lot of local interviews. Um, so we've had, you know, charities on in the past to want to, you know, their fundraising. Um, we've had, I mean, we've had some national stuff, like we've had the Harlem Globetrotters on when they've had a local show, um, Mm. a bunch of different like things, but typically we'll have one or two interviews at least a day. So those will be built in somewhere. Um, but yeah. And a lot of my show too is based around right now, the Olympics, because, Wesh mm-hmm. is an NBC affiliate, so we are going to be airing the Olympics. Um, so like one of my blocks, thankfully, is like almost already stacked for me whenever I come in because NBC is giving us Olympics packages right now. <laughs> so, awesome. I'm like, cool. <laughs> so I get to put it all in there. And I just um, like I said, with my being talk show, I make sure I always leave time, extra time on things for people to talk and chit chat, because that's that's the fun part about my show is I get to let the anchors show their personality a little bit more than just like the morning news where they have to kind of just read through the stories and go, go, go. Um, you know, by 9 a.m. I'm in the booth, just wearing my headset, kind of just I by, love the, it. by the time my show's produced, I mm-hmm. should only be sitting in the booth and just making sure that things don't fall apart. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, and then, yeah, my last hour of my shift is 10 to 11. I'm out of the booth by then. My show's over. Um, that last hour I usually use to just talk to people who work normal working hours and try to set up interviews for the next day, the next week, um, things like that. I love it. I love that breakdown. Again, on with Emily Harless from West to uh, Orlando, Florida on Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. Um I love that breakdown, Em. I really do. Um, and the reason why I do is because, you know, people that graduate out of college, um, I'm about four or five years into this because I started in Georgia prior to me graduating at Kennesaw State. And then I moved out here for my first full time job as a sports reporter. But people should know that when you work at these stations, you do sign contracts and sometimes you work some of the really wonkiest hours. If, I, if that's even a word um, from, like you say, 3 a.m. to 11 
11 a.m. Um, they should know that, you know, sometimes you might get the lower end of the hours. You might not start off at doing the eight to five or regular business hours. Um, but and you also have to understand there's a lot that goes into a show. Right. It's not just people sitting up there reading off a teleprompter. It's behind the scenes stuff that goes on, what you're doing, producing, trying to make sure everything goes right. And when things do go off script or go wrong, it's your job to make sure it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> right. You eventually go back on script. So for people that want to get into the journalism business, however position or role that you want to be, whether it's anchor, reporter, slash MMJ, or producer, they definitely got to know what's going on. Um, yeah. And I, I would you say, too, like, the hours, like, they are hard, but don't be, like, turned away from them. Because at first, obviously, I was just kind of like, ugh, but it was also my first job, so I wasn't going to be, like, picky about my hours. Sure. Um, sure. And so, but now that I'm in it, it's... I'm like, I don't really know that I would go to a normal day side shift. I I actually right. really like my hours because it's like, I get off at 11 a.m. I have almost my whole day until 7 or 8 p.m. Yep. So I still have that whole day when everybody else is at work that I can get what I need to get done. So Absolutely. Absolutely. It's got, it's got its it's got its perks. It's got its downsides. But I, I feel like it has a lot more perks than downsides sometimes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Anytime you get off and then you still get your two days off, wherever two days that may be. Yeah. Almost um, feels like a three day weekend because you're getting off at 11 on Friday. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So you still getting your time off in there doing your thing and, and whatever you got to do as far as appointments or this, that you're getting off at 11 o'clock. So it's a great time for you to go do that. You still have enough time to rest up uh, and be able to be refreshed to come back in that next day. Um, this is another great segue because I want to talk about mental health. You know, in our industry, as reporters and people in journalism, um, the two words that you hear the most is uh, overworked and um, underpaid. And you hear that a lot. Burnout is another word that you hear a lot as well. People get burnt out depending on their situation that they go to and what they're facing. Um, how do you deal with your mental health? You seem like a very personable person. I know I wouldn't mind being in hanging out with you at all. So you <laughs> seem like a person that would love to be around people. But everybody has those days. Yeah. Um, and you can't escape that. Right. And be, especially being in this in industry, sometimes we can have hard days and long days. So how do you deal uh, with your mental health and the work life balance? Yeah. So I was pretty as far as work life balance goes, I was pretty honest with my employer, like throughout the entire interview process. I'm like, when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm at home, I'm at home. And like I've told them, I'm like, I'm not going to respond to e emails outside of my working hours unless you warn me way ahead of time that it's like coming or like okay. if I'm waiting to set something up you know for an interview I, if I know I'm supposed to hear back from them today then I'll, I'll double check throughout the day but I generally people know now that if I'm at home I'm at home it's no different than if just because I have different hours doesn't mean I'm not allowed to have that balance right. um, so that was something I was very like clear from from the get-go we do have of course on-call weekends every once in a while that we have to um maybe go off that script a little bit, but the work-life balance for me has thankfully never been too much of an issue. Um, as far as the mental health goes, um, yeah, that can be hard. I think the biggest thing, cause I, when I first came here, I was not really taking the time to try to learn how to adjust to my new sleep schedule. Um, I think that was one of the big hits on my mental health that I needed to like you do need to take that time. If you have weird hours, you need to take that time to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as like, now that I'm used to it, you're going to have days. Yeah. Where you go in, maybe you're stressed because it doesn't feel like there's any content that you can put in your show. Right. Just know that it's going to work out, especially like your executive producer or whoever your boss is, whatever your role you are, they're not going to just let you not have anything. Like it's something is going to fall into place and God forbid everything falls apart. Nobody's gonna blame you you know like if you're supposed to be at a press conference and they cancel it last minute your boss is not gonna be like uh emily yeah it, they're gonna be like they know that it's not your fault so like sure. know that it's not just because you have a bad day that doesn't mean that you're not good at your job everybody mm -hmm. has bad days um so just knowing that in the back of your head but like on those days where maybe you do have a hard day i fortunately have a good support system around me that it's like sometimes i just call them and i'm like hey shut up for a second just let me rant and i just spew off everything that made me angry and then I'm like okay I'm done and you know fortunately my boyfriend's one of them he's always like okay do you want advice I'm like no I just needed to talk it's out and it's done <laughs> mm. but, like 
So having that support system and people who like can give you advice if you want it or can just listen to you if you need it, I think that's something that you really need to try to establish early on um, into your career. And it can be hard. Making friends as an adult is is very, very difficult, especially I'm one of the youngest people at my station. A lot of people at my station are, you know, their they're parents or they're about to get married. Like they're at very different stages of life than I am. Right. Um, so I encourage everybody, like if you're, especially if you're in a new area, like go out find things online. There's always Facebook groups to meet people as well. Um, but I am to be completely transparent. Like I am on an anti-anxiety medication as well. Like sometimes you need that. And if you do need that extra help and you do need to go to a therapist or talk to a psychiatrist, that's fine too. Nobody's going to judge you for that. And I right. think that's the biggest thing that I had to get through was I used to judge myself for like feeling like I wasn't okay, feeling like I needed to go on medication. I was like, uh, something's wrong with me, blah, 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 blah. Nothing's wrong with me. Like nope. nothing's wrong with anybody who goes through that. Sometimes you just need help and that's totally fine. So it's not always been easy, but just knowing that like, you're going to be okay. Nobody's going to let you fail. Nobody wants you to fail. And if they do want you to fail, that's not where you need to be. And surround yourself by positive people. We've had people on our shifts before who are a little bit more negative or like to complain more often than others. And mm -hmm. I choose to distance myself from those people because I know how that affects my mental health. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, I, I love that. And I love your honesty. I really do appreciate you being like that um, because that's a really important question. Um, people need to know that mental health is very important. Some of these stations, you have to do your homework. Uh, some of these stations really care about their bottom line and they don't care about your individual health as far as mental health. So you really got to make that uh, decisive decision on whether or not you want to pursue the role or not. But like you said, find avenues, get a great support system. Family is always great. I know for me personally, I don't have anybody out here in Minnesota, but uh, I'm a huge mama's boy. So I definitely call moms back home. I'll talk to her. I do got a couple friends here that I'll go hang out, shoot some pool. Um, throw some darts um, and stuff like that. Just stuff to get your mind off of it a little bit. I write poetry as well, work out. So I, you try to find things, like you said, to kind of um, keep you going, keep your mental health strong, uh, but also with the work-life balance. Um, I know I was struggling at first. Uh, when I came here, um, sports is nights and weekends. That's what it is, right? So they play games, they have results. Uh, we do sports stories. Uh, we do previews, all this, that, and the third, but nobody wants to date anybody that's getting off at midnight. <laughs> I mean, it, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to have, yeah, it's pretty hard to have breakfast dates all the time. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to be able to try to find and navigate your way uh, with the right people. And like you said about negativity, uh, negativity is huge. You definitely want to distance yourself from negative people because it really seeps into your mind when you have a bunch of negativity around you. So. And this job is a fulfilling job. It's a wonderful job. And you really got to be passionate to do this job because if you are around people that's not passionate, it's just, not, it's not going to work for your mental health. So I love that you said that. Um, I want to ask you this bonus question because you, you kind of threw it out there earlier and it's about hard news, mm -hmm. right? When you're producing a show and you know, you got some hard news coming. We know the soft news stories is great. They make people cry, laugh, smile, all the above. But hard news can also do that, too. Um, it, has there ever been a time where you produced hard news where you took it home with you or it was hard for you to distance yourself from it? I think one of the more recent cases, there's been a couple that have actually happened pretty recently. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the Madeline Soto case. It was a 13 year old um, who went missing and then was found you know, dead a few days later and her mom's boyfriend's now charged with her murder wow. um, no, I so, did not. yeah so he like that's that that one was pretty rough on me because more so before her body was found I was just con I was kind of just like where is this poor 13 year old girl you know sure. um sure. so sometimes like you think about that or like we did have a a carjacking and murder recently and sometimes it's hard because like you, you know, you live in these areas where you work. And unfortunately, like that carjacking and kidnapping happened five minutes from my house. Mm. So I was sitting, you know, that that was something in my mind. I'm like, 
because at first we were like, is this random? Is this planned? Like, I'm like, I don't want to just be sitting at a stoplight and get carjacked like this poor girl did. And she now she's dead. Right. Um, so sometimes you have those things because you know people in the community, you know these areas. And I think that's what sticks with me the hardest is those are those cases where it's like, you know, the people or you know the area because you can't get away from it. You have to see those people or see that street that it happened on every day. Yeah, um, absolutely. And there's some too. I mean, like I like I like true crime cases. So there's some that have like happened across the country, not even here, that I still am like wondering about, like the Idaho four case. Mm. I'm very much like, what happened that night? And that happened nowhere near me, but I am so stuck on that case myself. And one of our anchors are like every Brian Koberger hearing, we're like, what is going on? <laughs> so, right, right. Sometimes, right. sometimes that happens. Some you just skip those. So I feel that. No, I feel that. And I, I love asking that question, too, because sometimes you do take it home. That's one of the reasons that kind of uh, diverted me from news, although because I couldn't see myself interviewing somebody like after a fire happened or after someone got shot. Like, you know, you have a job to do. I get that. Uh, but it's, it would just be tough for me with sports. You know, it's going to you know, it's going to happen. Somebody going to win. Somebody going to lose. Yeah, heartbreak is going to happen because no, no, there is no ties unless you're playing soccer. So, um, you know, that's just what it is with sports. Um, but with news, it's just a little bit more. It could be touch and go. Like I said, it's not always hard news. There's some great stories out there that's being told. But um, I, I just I always like asking that question for sure. Um, but we are at the point where I want to do this or that. Now, yeah. basically what this is is I'm throwing two things at you, Emily, and I want you to choose either this or that. Are you with me? I, I'm I'm with you. Okay, let's rock. Now, this first question is important, and it's going to test our friendship, okay? Okay. Popeyes or KFC? I'm only going to choose KFC because I've never had Popeyes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, that is going to be your homework okay, <laughs> for, the okay. next time, for the next time. I don't know if we there's not, a Popeye's. We do not have a lot in Indiana. We have more Popeye's down here. I just haven't made it there. I, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to put it on hold because you said you never had it. So I, I can't really okay. base the decision on that until you try both because you got to compare both. Okay. So KFC by default is what we'll say. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Um, do you like chicken wings? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to throw two flavors out at you. You choose one. Okay. Okay. Lemon pepper or barbecue? Actually, lemon pepper. Mm, okay. Okay. We're back on the right track now. Okay. Bone <laughs> in or boneless? Bone in. Okay. I like, so you like to get messy a little bit. What a you're saying? Bit. A bit. Okay. okay. I like that. I like that. All right. Here we go. Which sport would you rather play? Would you rather play badminton or bowling? Badminton. Oh, okay. All right. You I was good at badminton on... in high school. Was you? Okay. <laughs> mm. Let me find out what's going on. Okay, badminton. I like that. All right. Okay, here we go. The next one here. These next three have to do with music concerts you rather attend. Okay? Yep. So here we go. First one up. Which music concert would you rather go to? Would you rather go to, um, okay, I'm going to say Chris Brown or Usher? Oh, Usher. Mm, okay. Then, okay. All right. Here we go. We all to a good start. All right. Which concert would you rather go to? Would you rather go to J. Cole or Kendrick? Oh, Kendrick. Oh, okay. All right. Did, did you did you hear his disc record that he came out with? Ooh. Ooh. Six and a half minutes of straight bullying. Okay. Uh Drizzy, you bet Drizzy, you up. You up the bat. <laughs> I mean, because he came out firing on that one. Ooh, that was some hot stuff right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would I would choose Kendrick too, by the way. Okay. This next one here. Which one would you rather go to? Would you rather go to see Eminem or Logic? Eminem. Oh, Eminem over Logic. Okay. I think so. 
I'm a okay. big, I, I grew up on Eminem. My dad mm-hmm. was a big old Eminem fan and I've yet yep. to see him in concert. So yeah, he don't, he don't do too many shows. I M- M- <laughs> M- 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 M's a hermit. He, he stays at home. For sure. Okay. I like that. I really do. Okay. Now, which sport would you rather watch on TV? Basketball or football? Football. Okay. Uh, are you a Colts fan? Oh, yeah. God bless your heart. I tell you <laughs> that. <laughs> God bless your heart for being a Colts we're, fan. We're getting there. Uh, we're getting there. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. You know what? Uh, I think I'm not, I forgot what it was, but I, I went to a Monday night football game where they were playing my Chargers. It was like either last year or the year before. It was in Indianapolis. So I went there, saw that. I love Lucas Oil Stadium. I really do. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite stadiums to go to. Plus, they're indoors when it was cold. And it was cold because that was in December when that game was. So, mm-hmm. yes, I loved it. Okay. That's awesome. I got three more for you. But these next two are going to be four options. And one of them you can not you can never eat again. Are you a dessert person? Yes. Okay. So, here we go. We got four options. And you got to throw one way for good. Here we go. A, cookies. B, Cakes, that means cupcakes, pound cakes, whatever cakes. D, ice cream. D, pies. Which one are you throwing away? Um, cakes, actually. Wow. I'm not, I don't like frosting. Ooh, okay. (laughs) It's like I can feel the sugar in my body if I have too much frosting, so I can't. I feel that. No, I feel that. Listen, that means more cake for me. So I, I totally go. understand that. I would have threw out the pies. I would have threw out pies for I think sure. A pumpkin and pecan pie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> since we are being transparent on here, uh, never had pumpkin or pecan pie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Why your face do that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like those are such staples to my life. <laughs> like, right. I, I'm feeling every Look, well, Thanksgiving. Okay. I'm allergic to nuts. So okay. pecan well, is out. Pecan makes sense. <laughs> pecan is out. Now, pumpkin, Um, I just never had it. I mean, I've had apple. Yeah. I've had cherry. Uh, I've even had blueberry. But I've never had um, uh, pumpkin pie. So, no. I would say never it's acquired. It. It's an acquired okay. taste. Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna try it one of these days, and I'll let you know how it tastes. That's Sounds for sure. good. Here we go. Are you a chip person? Oh yeah. Okay, so same rule applies. Here we go. A Ruffles, B Cheetos, C Doritos, D Lay's. Which one are you getting rid of? Lay's. Wow. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. I feel like they're just too, too flop. <laughs> no, no. I'm I'm saying wow because I would have got rid of the same chip because I can't I can't give I can't give my ruffles away. I'm a huge thigh cream and cheddar person when it comes to ruffles. Uh, I can't give my Doritos away because I love Cool Ranch. Right. And I can't give my Cheetos away because hell, I love every damn Cheetos. So it don't yes. matter which Cheetos it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love every one. Okay, I like that. Here we go with the music one, okay? Now, which uh, artist would you go see in concert? This is the last one, but this is a tough one. Would you rather go see the Beehive, Beyonce, or would you rather see Taylor Swift? Taylor Swift. You da- Damn, you said that pretty quick, Em. Wow, okay. <laughs> I would love to see both, um, but I will. I do feel like I am a certified Swifty, so I have to... <laughs> Okay, so yeah. you're gonna go all out at this November concert. Are you like buying the T-shirt? Are you gonna like buy like? Oh my god, I have I have bedazzled cowboy boots. That I'm wow, <laughs> do you have them there? Do you have them there with you? Yeah, I can grab them. Please grab them. I want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this. My gosh, <laughs> I'm rocking with Emily Harless here on the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. News producer based okay. out of Orlando. She is showing me her bedazzled Taylor Swift boots. Oh, play. Okay, please. Show them. Wow. Look at that. Girl, you're going to kill the game when they show up at Banker's Life Field House. My gosh. Okay. I love it. I love it. Wow. You're going to look amazing. I mean, you, you look amazing. Never mind. But you're going to look amazing in those boots because nobody else, I don't think, is going to have that. <laughs> That's for sure. Wow. Okay. 
So if Emily wasn't involved in journalism, what career would Emily pursue and why? Oh. <laughs> um, probably. I would probably go for paramedic. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like I said before, I went into pre-med, um, actually originally wanted to be an ER doctor. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's another option as well, but I, my school has a program that was partnered up with our local fire station that allowed seniors to be like rookie EMTs. Um, so they, I was one of them and I loved it. Um, so I, yeah, I love, I would that's honestly sometimes there are days where I'm like uh do I just want to be an EMT because I liked it so much that's awesome that really is and shout out to your dad for being the first responder we need more need more people like that for sure um I I love that answer I would as I said I would be in theater but if there was another one outside of that um I would probably be mm, if I wasn't sports and I wasn't theater I I definitely would be a musician, probably mm -hmm. a singer. I do I love karaoke. I do love karaoke, for sure. Are you a karaoke person? Depending depending on the song, for sure. What 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 is your song? What's your go to? I don't have like a specific go to song genre wise. I mean, I definitely go for more pop songs, but I love an early two thousands song. You put some early two thousands Rihanna or something on. I'll I'll hop up there. Why not? <laughs> like, okay. Okay. Yes, um, I'm Chris Brown forever. I really like that. That that's my jam right there. So I definitely rock out to that. Um, and then uh, if you're going retro, then I definitely um, one of my favorite songs is probably uh, "Sexual Healing" by Marvin Gaye. Okay. There yeah, you go. yeah, I could rock to I could rock to something like that. That's because my mother played that song all the time when I was like a kid. I was like, who is this? Yeah. <laughs> right. So. It's one of those things. Okay, I like that. Uh, what's some of the favorite shows that you produce thus far uh, in Orlando? Do you have a favorite moment that you would like to share or two that you have produced in a show? Um, I would say, honestly, a lot of my favorite moments have not been in the studio. We do um, a segment down here during Christmas called Share Your Christmas. It's a partnership with Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, mm -hmm. where like we send our anchors and reporters to like different areas in the county and we're kind of all serving as like reporters that day. So there are anchors that are in the studio. There's like one or two producers who stay back, but the rest of us field produce. And, um, so I was out this year at, um, DeLuca Toyota in Ocala down here and we were, you know, just people were bringing in canned goods and food to donate, or they could bring in money if they wanted to give second harvest direct money donations, um, and honestly, that was probably one of my favorite projects I've ever done because it gave my love of being out in the community that I love so much from reporting, but it, I also was still able to have that, uh, like being in chargeness that I enjoy and controlling the show that I love about producing. Um, so that's probably my favorite thing I've ever done, either that or the, um, OUC half marathon that is every December down here as well. Same sort of deal where we track the runners. Um, so that's another field producing opportunity. But I would say as far as like shows go, I really like politics. Um, mm -hmm. So anytime that we've had debates and we're able to show off our big political showcasing afterward, I love doing political showcasing or investigative pieces like that. I love that. And and God bless those people that do those half marathons. I did my first 5K <laughs> last November. And I was like, Lord, if I don't have a ball in my hand, it is just hard to be running with air and wind. Oh, I'm just, it, <laughs> I got to have something in my hand, like for real, to play. That's just me. Um, I need some rec I need some recommendations. So, and I, I normally like to do this at the, the typical, the end towards the end of the show. Recommendations on number one, uh, what to do in Orlando. It's been a while since I've been there. Um and also Indianapolis, because like I said, it's almost a guarantee that I will be back there next March for the combine or late February, early March for the combine for sure. But I definitely want to go down there and see some Pacer games for mm -hmm. sure or 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 Colts if they're playing my Chargers because I'm a Chargers fan. So <laughs> um, give me give me uh, I would say three recommendations for each one, uh, Orlando and Indianapolis of what I should do. I will start with Indy. I'll start with my home. Um, 
I think Indy is an underestimated sports city. So like you're saying, any sports game you can go to, even the uh, minor league Indianapolis Indians, um, mm-hmm. there's fun games. Um, go to them. Like there's nothing like the sports culture in Indianapolis. Um, as far as entertainment, if you're ever there during like Christmas time, mm-hmm. um, Christmas in downtown Indianapolis is amazing. Um, the tree lighting that they do in uh, the Circle Center is mm-hmm. at the World War II Memorial is amazing. Um, they basically turn it into a huge Christmas tree. So wow. attending that is a lot of fun. Um, and it is also just a great place where it's like you you ever have a business opportunity. I would say Indianapolis, if that if it's like there and you're considering going to a conference, you need to go to it because it is there's not I, I didn't hang out a lot in downtown Indianapolis, but there's so many things to do. And it's called the Crossroads of America for a reason, because it's so easy to get to. Everybody goes there. Um, the opportunities there are, are endless. As far as Orlando goes, I always tell anybody who comes here to go to Lake Eola Park um, just because it gives you a beautiful view of downtown. You can walk around the lake and you can see already so many like mom and pop shops and things that you can go visit that you want to choose. But also it's just a beautiful park. Um, you can get like little swan boats and boat across the um, the lake. So that's always a fun thing. Like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If you ever want to drive outside of downtown, um, there is a place called International Drive, or I Drive, if you'll hear the locals call it. Um, that's where Ripley's Believe It or Not is. We have um, something down there, if you have kids, called Wonderworks. That is very similar-ish to a Ripley's oh. Believe It or Not or a Children's Oh, oh, oh no, not, not, not right now. No, no kids. <laughs> no not kids you, but now. maybe somebody watching. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, Ripley. Somebody make, oh, yeah, once I post yeah. it, you're right. Okay. okay. Um, but that's that's a lot of fun. I mean, I've even been there as an adult and it's been fun. But it's and then they have all sorts of like they've got bars down there too. They've have big old like Ferris wheel games, there's go-karting. So that's a great place to go because there's something for really everybody who goes there, you can find something to do. And if okay. you wanna if you have a car, if you're able to drive to the beach, I always obviously recommend going to the beach. My favorite's new Smyrna. Um if you drive specifically down Flagler Avenue, it looks like a cutesy little small town, but it's just these little perfect beachy surf shop things. So New Smyrna Beach, that's the one you want to go to. I love it. I love it. And, and um, if anybody follows your IG, you were there earlier today for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I was like, I go okay. almost. I go almost every weekend. Okay. All right. I was like, all right. That's cool. Uh, that's a beautiful scenery. Beautiful scenery out there. That's for sure. Um, this next question I have for you is advice. Um, which advice, uh, did someone give you that you hold on dearly to, uh, either it could be life advice, it could be industry advice, it could be anything, but what is some advice that someone gave to you that you hold on dearly to? Oh, um, wow. It's hard because I've had a lot of good mentors in the past. Um, I think the biggest thing that's stuck with me is just knowing that what like life is basically like a ladder or like a staircase and yeah your goal is to go up it you're wanting to go up it to reach your goals but Mm. sometimes a wrong may break out from underneath you or you might miss a stair and trip or whatever Mm. but that doesn't mean you're suddenly falling down the whole ladder that doesn't mean you're falling down the whole stair you're gonna pick yourself back up and you're gonna keep going and you're gonna be okay um, so just remembering that each like goal in my life, each stepping stone in my life is just a ladder or a stair step. And if I miss one, it's, ha- it's fine. Everybody trips on the stairs every once in a while. You're going to get back up and you're going to keep going. Mm. I like it. Life is like a stair ladder. That's mm-hmm. that is probably a, a bar right there. That's a mic drop right there. Uh, I have not heard that saying before, but I love it. I really do. That's that's really dope. Um, who would you recommend to people mm-hmm. that is wonderful as yourself, as you've been on this podcast with me, that would want to rock with me and come on and talk to me a little bit like you have? Who is two people in your mind? Um. I think one that would be good that's still in the industry. His name is Tyler Brummett. Um, he works, he is a reporter up in Indiana. Um, actually trans- just transitioning now. He just got a new job in Michigan. So that's a, that'd be a cool one. Talking about transitioning markets, things like that. Um, and then another one, if you wanted to see kind of how 
because journalism is not for everybody. Sometimes people transition out and use their journalism degrees in other ways. And my friend, my friend Blake Dahlier, that's exactly what he did. He used to be a reporter in Terre Haute, Indiana, and now he works for INDOT as their public information officer. So if you wanted to see kind of that side of the world and it's like, how do you, you know, how do you transition? How do you, do you still use a degree not in news? I think you'd be a great person to talk to. Absolutely. There's a lot of people that transition out of journalism, do PR, uh, firms and different things, advertising, marketing, all different kind of stuff like that. So, yeah, that would be dope. I would love to talk to those two gentlemen and, and anybody else you could possibly think of, like I said, that's wonderful like yourself. Um, this has been really fun. I've had a really, really good time talking to you. Um, obviously, you are dedicated by what you do. I've learned a lot about you. You are a bone-in wingless per- wing person. <laughs> you were killer at badminton. You're a Swifty. Uh, you have <laughs> you have the boots uh, to match to go <laughs> with the outfit that you're going to rock in November. Uh, and you're a producer that loves to be in control, <laughs> but does a great job of doing uh, the shows that you do. Um I always ask this question and, uh, as we sign off here on the Work Hard or Play Harder podcast. Is there anything else you would like to add before we conclude about yourself? Um, I think just in general, like I'm always just, I know you always say it in your, all your bios, but I'm always willing to talk to anybody. I'm always willing to network with anybody. So if anybody has any further questions, um, I'm always available to reach out to if people need advice. Um or on how to get into different areas of life, or if people just like sometimes need to chit chat about like, maybe you're moving to Orlando, you need to learn places where to live. Let me know. I I love meeting new people. That, and so do I. And this is why I do this platform. Uh, I really, really thank you so much. Uh, obviously, if I touch down in Orlando, I'm definitely going to have to hit you up for sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, or if I catch you in Indianapolis at that time, I'm going to have to hit you up for sure. Uh, but um, I want you to enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much, Emily, for coming on. And we will be in touch. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>